Guten Morgen, everyone. Kai Janschowski, Mount St. Peter Eye Clinic Trier. Now after the first video about the lamella preparation for DMEC, let's jump right into the hacks for the DMEC lamella implantation inside the eye. All right, just a couple of thoughts while we watch the me doing the regular FACO. Now the design of the tunnel is pretty much the same that I used for a FACO approach. I don't want to be too long in order not to mess with my inner diameter of the endothelial rexus. Um, I use a cohesive and dispersive viscoelastic. I, I was thinking, um, and now I'm designing the paracentesis two thirds of a 23 gauge. That's just in trying to make it a bit longer and not all the way through in order to have more stabilization of the interior chamber. Now the rex size is pretty much 5.0 diameters um, uh, nothing fancy there. I would always suggest that you would start with the uh, peri or para retrobulbar anesthesia or under general anesthesia for your first couple of hundred cases. And once you're very familiar with the whole procedure, then you can go down to topical anesthesia. Um, this is very um, helpful, especially if you perform this in an outpatient setting. Just um, takes a quick learning curve after a couple of hundred cases. Generally, I would um, suggest using um, having a very good uh, FACO education before that. So just to make sure to have about 2000 FACOs under your belt before you even go for that. Now, um, about the cohesive and dispersive vis viscoelastics, <clears throat> I'm just doing that because it's, it's my usual habit. I did have the impression that sometimes when you use a dispersive uh, viscoelastic, the restaining inside the eye um, after you you've ripped out the um, the old endothelium can be a bit harder but um, I've never uh, never been sure now <clears throat> while we are implanting the lens um, I like to do an iridectomy with a yak iridotomy before that because as you see me there trying to constrict the pupil with my call there isn't really that much happening. And this is always the problem in combined cases. Therefore, I like to <clears throat> have an yak aridotomy performed um, prior to surgery, a couple of weeks before that. That way you can have a very controlled situation and you don't have to be like me in this situation um, and have to do another sclerotomy as well. This might destabilize the anterior chamber and sometimes you really get huge huge iridectomies if you perform them manually um, and also you can see me fiddling about just a little bit now why do i still um, use an iridotomy or iridectomy i'm just very afraid of the inverse pupillary block that can be caused by the endotamponase either gas or air i know that there are guys in the literature who are not doing it anymore and who do not seem to have problems but in an outpatient setting, I always prefer to do this as an extra um, extra measure of security. Now, um, the intraocular pressure of my effusion line is set to about 50 here. So it's the regular settings. I don't really go down a lot before that. Now, as you see me here, um, I'm using my seven millimeter trafen with just a quarter, quarter twist in order to mark my rexus and then stain it with tripe and blue. A nice trick here that you can use to be a bit more elegant is just putting trifon blue um, inside a thing and then putting a trifon inside it. This way you won't have to restain the corneal surface and this makes it just a little bit more elegant um, if you're really going um, for elegance. Now you see in here I'm pretty much inside the seven millimeter mark that I've put on the corneal surface. This always depends on how many fluid remnants you are thinking you have while you are preparing the DMAC. Sometimes you have to be a bit bigger in order to prevent an overlap. Now there is guys who do this under air and um, from what I've seen in videos and heard from results, it's, it's quite a good thing that works well. Um, it's just my personal preparation that I do it under, under BSS solution. Now, if you take the bigger scraper, 
you want to make sure that you are not scraping through the optical center, just have an indirect pull of the lamella while you are within the optical axis and try not to try not to scrape the stromal part within the optical center. This can sometimes lead to optical problems of the patient. Now, as you can see, there is some remnants left. Therefore, I restain with a triple blue inside the eye, um, trying to make the remnants more visible in order to, to pick it out with my inverted forceps. I think this is quite useful and quite in handy. This is sometimes the problem that you see here if you're using a dispersive viscoelastic that this um, the staining characteristics might not be that optimal and therefore i was experimenting a lot with uh, just uh, leaving it away but the i'm just so used to this um, dispersive and cohesive viscoelastics during cataract surgery um, that i've not given up this practice i don't think it's that much of a big deal now, with the remnants that are still left there, if they are connected, connected to the stroma or if you are within the stroma and you see some stromal remnants, I would always suggest that you leave the stromal remnants in there because um, the patient isn't really affected by that and you can only do harm within the stromal part and um, cause scarring. If you have an IOCT at hand, um, it can be very, very handy in those cases where you're not sure if there's still remnants left, if the triple blue is not staining as much as you want to stain, and if you want to see if you are within the stromal part or not. Um, I will put up an extra video regarding IOCT and using the IOCT in cases of DMAC surgery. I think it is useful in some cases, but if you don't have an IOCT, you might as well just um, not use it. Now, what I forgot to point out in the beginning is that we are just doing a, this is a raw DMAC implantation that you have here, and we will just be go running, uh, running through the uh, hex. Now, watch what I'm doing here. I'm having the lamella with the injector, and I'm pushing forward just a little bit. I used to do this a lot, and then just one time as I injected the lamella on top of the eye, rather inside the anterior chamber. And I was um, I was really struggling to to put the lamella back again. Therefore, I have absolutely stopped doing this, and I would recommend that to anyone, even if you are an absolute killer with DMAC, and if you're moving forward and you're absolutely sure of your hand, it will happen once every I don't know every 500 DMAX or every thousand DMAX. Even that is too too many cases that you that you will have to be looking for the DMAX outside the eye, and sometimes it's really hard to find. Now watch me, I have lowered the infusion pressure to zero and I've switched it off while injecting it and I've, I've caught the membrane with my irrigation cannula and now I'm just using a Göttinger spatula to go inside and this is the stromal side of the rexus and now I'm just I'm having the eye in hypotony and watch at the 10 o'clock position I will freeze frame it for you here, put the arrow. This is the spearhead, the arrowhead, or the shark fin mark that we have there. And just again to remember there was this um, overview. This gives you the orientation of the lamella. Now, if you are within the problematic situation that your shark fin or arrowhead mark isn't really well to see, then, well, an IOCT might come in hand or just make sure that during the preparation um, you will be able to to see the shark fin exactly where it's located. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just injecting a tiny bubble of air going in with a pressure of about 25 millimeters of mercury and then I try to directly touch the endothelium now at the edges while relocating or perfectly positioning the lamella. I think it's very important that you just touch the edges because whenever you touch the endothelium, you have a direct contact and all the endothelial cells where you touch, they will die down. Therefore, I would not recommend using the um, forceps too excessively. But that's it. Put in gas, put in air, whatever you like. You don't really need to suture the sclerotomies. I uh, put in a contact lens, but that's it. Um, 
this has been the implementation. All right, guys, let's go to the summary. First things first, if possible, perform the yak iridotomy prior to surgery. This will give you extra stabilization um, of the anterior chamber. First cases that you do, try to do it under general anesthesia or peribulbia, or parabulbia, retrobulbia anesthesia, just anything before you go into the um, topical anesthesia with drops. Um, I would always suggest that you mark the inverse rexus of the recipient on the corneal surface. Um, this just makes it nicer for the preparation while you do the inner rexus. Do not mess around with the transplant outside the eye. Just do not try to push it forward. Um, it will end up somewhere in a bag or outside the eye or on the floor of the OR. That's not a good thing. Lower the pressure while you're injecting the cannula, uh, while you're injecting the lamella. Turn the pressure even off if you can and use the arrowhead um, mark that gives you the right orientation of the lamella. Thanks for watching.